Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everyone, this is Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Merry Christmas, happy holidays everybody. And boy, we got some beautiful weather down here in Arizona. But weather's not so good in other areas. So stay tuned. It's definitely uh, made me feel better now that the uh, summer's over and you guys heard us going through the hot weather. And yeah, we definitely got harassed for it for like I'd never go down there in 110 degree weather. And uh, I don't blame you. It was a, a tough three months. But now, we're down here, uh, and it's like summer every day uh, in Arizona. So we're averaging mm, six high 60s, um, up to middle 70s, and it uh, looks like it'll be that way for a little while. And so, I mean, every day you go out to lunch, you go shopping or anything like that, you can sit outside. It's comfortable. Occasionally, you might need a sweater or a light jacket. Uh, once you've been down here for a while, you get a little bit used to warmer weather. So then you get cold in you know, the high 60s, which I never did in, when we lived in Washington. So anyway, but what it got me to thinking about is the fact is RVs are not designed for full-time living. I hate to say that, folks. He's like, I know you want to argue with me on that, but they're not designed for it. They're designed to be recreational vehicles. And you... Uh, you just try to get one of those salesmen at the uh, stores to say, oh, yeah, these are designed for full-time living. Uh, first of all, I think there's a legal issue that they couldn't even really say that. And if they do, they shouldn't be. And so I guess what I want to talk about today is is if you're new or thinking about becoming an RVer, you need to just keep telling yourself, no matter what kind of RV you get, whether it's a motorhome, trailer, or fifth wheel, or camper, these rigs are not designed for full-time living. And uh, I know people say, well, I beg to differ. Well, yeah, you could say they're designed for full-time living, but you need to be a full-time mechanic and troubleshooter. And because, uh, you know, heavy roads and, uh, and long-term uh, living in, a, in an RV... Uh, I can tell you, I definitely can see, after living in our fifth wheel for a year, the stress that we're putting on it. So Sherry and I started talking about this a little bit and started to analyze it. And I think some of the things we wanted to pass on is how you buy your, your motorhome in the first place. And uh, it's a, number one, bad investment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and... We can argue about that one too, but they're just not good investments. So if you're buying new or fairly new, uh, I think the biggest problem that comes up, and I think I was listening to another podcast, same problem, is it's really easy for you to go what they call underwater, where you owe more on the RV than you can sell it for, really. And so the only way people really move up is they do these kind of funny deals with the dealerships and kind of pass on the differences onto the next rig and you just continue to stay underwater. So Sherry and I were saying, well, one of the first things you probably want to make sure you do is um, either put a very heavy duty deposit on a RV. So you put a, you know, up to 25 to 50% down on the RV and then go from there. Now, I know there's a lot of other things like you could buy an older rig and then uh, and uh, work on it and maintenance and and bring it up to standards, and that would be a good way to get. Uh, well, it's hard to say if you can get your money's worth out of it. Some people will say, "Well, I bought it for ten thousand. I sold it for ten thousand. I did really good," but they probably put five thousand into it. So, did you really do that good? And is your time worth money? That's a really big thing. People don't think about their time being worth money. 
So if you put a lot of time into your RV getting it fixed up before you even go, that really is a value. So even though you may have paid ten thousand and sold for ten thousand, you may have five to ten thousand dollars worth of parts and labors into your RV, and so you're just not making money. Just let's get past that part. So let's talk about at least I'm going to talk you to you about the observations we've had with our RV, which was practically new when we bought it. And now that we've been in it for a year, some of the things I'm noticing. So, of course, you know, me and Sherry probably uh, made it worse because we have a pet, pets, a cat and a dog. So, of course, you're going to have shedding. And so you're going to have fur everywhere. This is how it is. And when you're living in an RV, your windows are open all the time. Like down here in Arizona, we definitely have dust coming in. Uh, we're running our equipment more. And uh, uh, after a year, I can see uh, little things that are starting to show that we've been living in here. A little bit of wear in some of the uh, carpeting because they don't put the you know prime cut uh, uh, <laughs> carpeting in these things or floors or anything like that. So um, uh, luckily, we haven't had really any major breakdowns, but. Uh, I've watched a couple of people now with brand new RVs, even the same make we got, and uh, uh, I've had some hard times. But I'm going to talk about this one. Uh, def you know, definitely showing signs like uh, we have stools in here that we had to replace the little uh, caps on the on their feet because they're starting to wear out and break, and then they could mark up the floor. Um, you know, things like the, the bathroom, the toilet seats and stuff like that um, are getting loose and things like that. So we're tightening things up. Um, and it, it just um, can tell that we're making our RV age faster than what an R, you know, RV is designed to do. RVs are designed to be recreational vehicles. You use them on weekends and kind of part-time. When you live in these things full time, you're putting probably maximum stress on every single thing in this RV, whether it's the water systems, the air, uh, like air conditioners. Uh, I put in a third air conditioner just to relieve the pressure off the ones on the top of the of the roof, and they're doing fine. I'm surprised they did so well. And it, and boy, make sure you're cleaning your filters out and things like that because these things are working. And the same thing with your propane and stove and and uh, refrigerator. Uh, if you're going to be running them day in and day out, they're not really designed for that. They're designed for recreational use. So if you weren't living in your RV, your RV probably will last a long, long time. But if you're going to live in these things full time, you, I, I, I think it's almost like dog years, <laughs> I swear. Because... <laughs> uh, they're just not designed for that. And uh, uh, like I said, Sherry and I have been very fortunate, but we also kind of um, do a lot of maintenance and we're not traveling. We're not out on the road as much either. So that's probably a big factor too. Now, if you're living in these full time and traveling um, every other day or once a week uh, for hundreds of miles, then you're probably really aging your RV fast. And, I'm not saying it's good, bad, or indifferent. I'm just telling you that if you're going to get into RVing, you need to know that this is a real, true thing you need to know. That these RVs, new, used, or not, uh, are not designed for full-time living. And uh, there'll be people that will beg to differ on that, but the fact is they're not. And if they were designed that way, then um, they wouldn't be RVs. And... So that might be where, you know, we've had the discussion about tiny homes. And uh, I would say that those would be built a little bit more for full-time living. Not so much for traveling, but um, if you were to put a tiny home in a place that you're going to live in full-time, they're much more durable, probably have more uh, up to, uh, appliances that are more um, residential type and would last longer and uh, keep their values. And a, and a lot of that, this has come up, come to mind because, you know, we watch other people's videos and the problems. So you saw Sherry and I go through the summer, this really hot weather. 
And so to protect the RV, you know, we're putting things in the windows, trying to keep things covered up, making sure we had a uh, our roof treated for uh, UV rays, and and uh, we watched our hoses uh, just disintegrate from the hot weather. Uh, we had insulation around our water pipes that were designed for freezing temperatures literally melt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it looked, I couldn't believe it. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, whether you're in the cold or whether you're in extreme heat or maybe a lot of moisture, these RVs are just under a, you know, it's abusing them. It's, it's, it's hard on them. And so right now... I guess the big thing is if you decide to be an RVer, uh, you need to really tell yourself, okay, what are we going to do with this RV? Am I going to go from the West Coast to the East Coast or East Coast to the West Coast? Am I going to just do what I want to do or am I going to follow the weather? Uh, am I dictated by my job? Am I dictated by my family or go visit my kids uh, if, you have, if you're retired? Um, you really need to think about that, and I, I say that in a, uh, so you can be con you know constructive and making sure that not only do you buy the right RV, but you are prepared for the different con uh, conditions out here. And I don't know how many videos I watch is oh I froze up last night or I uh, uh, damaged my roof or it's too hot in here I can't keep the RV cool enough in hot weather. Over and over and over again, we hear about this. And then the other thing is, uh, there's a recent person who's out there with an RV whose refrigerator went out and can't get into a dealership to get it fixed. And so, um, because they're down in an area where uh, the snowbirds are at and they're backlogged for months. And so, um, you really need to keep in mind that these RVs are just not prepared for this kind of um, living or full-time in. So you're going to have these issues. So uh, what I want to talk about is being prepared. So the big thing that I've uh, noticed is it seems like that so many of these folks that are doing videos and stuff seem to like like they're shocked. Uh, why did I freeze up when it's um, you know five degrees out? <laughs> well, it's because it's five degrees out. So uh, it seems like that they run to the store and buy the things that they need to prevent it after something happens. And so what I'm trying to get you to think about is um, is one watch these videos of people have had freeze ups or damage or. Uh, flooding and, and problems with the water systems or, or pipes breaking or tanks cracking and at least learn from their mistakes and that's a lot of time, reasons why we and all of us make our videos is to show you what things have gone wrong for us and hopefully you don't make the same mistakes as we did and so uh, uh, you really got to ask yourself um, first of all am I going to be in weather and, and a lot of you will be because either you have to stay in a certain area due to family issues or your job. Traveling nurses have to go wherever their work is. It's all uh, maybe you're work camping and maybe you're there doing the nice weather, but you have to stay there till the end of the season where the weather is starting to change and you don't have a choice. And so you, you need to analyze that and try to, prepare ahead of time uh, instead of doing it on the day it happens or aftermath because uh, then the damage is already done are you going to be up against freezing temperatures are you going to maybe go up to Alaska and maybe you're going to go up to higher elevations and even, even though it may be summertime or springtime you may still be hitting f uh, freezing temperatures it's better to be prepared ahead of time and how to deal with it so learn how to, one, check your fittings. How do you keep your fittings warm? Um, how are people keeping their water lines warm? Is your RV prepared to uh, stay warm under the undercarriage? Does it pump uh, warm air under there? If not, is there ways of doing it? 
Uh, are you insulated as well as, you know, people say, well, yeah, I've got the winter, um, winterization insulation uh, <laughs> installed in this RV. I have news for you. It's not enough. So you really have to be proactive. And a lot of times you may have to bring in your own devices, your own kind of heaters, heaters underneath this in the storage area. Uh, maybe you have to find a way to pump uh, warm air into your uh, uh, storage area or underbelly. Uh, maybe you need to put a skirt around your RV and put some lights underneath there. And it doesn't have to be warm, but it has to be enough to help keep it from freezing. Um, so maybe you need to invest in skirts or maybe you need to invest on in separate. And the other thing is power cords. Having enough power cords uh, is... Uh, during the winter is really important because you may be hooking up extra heaters just to keep the underbelly of the uh, your RV uh, warmer, especially where your valves are for your water systems and your uh, and there may be a whole nother separate area just for your filters and things like that, and those will freeze up and crack really easy, uh, especially in a motorhome. So yeah, I mean you need to start you need to get this stuff now before it happens and not after it happens. If you're gonna if you're gonna be in the freezing temperatures, you will need to get some heating cords or, or uh, they uh, also have heat tape um, and all those require an extra plug in. And if you are in an RV park, you'll notice that uh, you don't have that many plug ins. So you're gonna need extension cords with, a, uh, with uh, extra plugs on them so you can run these extra cords. And of course, you got to ask yourself the big question, I want to boondock and I want to be in these cold temperatures. How are you going to protect the RV? Because you're going to need power. And so that's where having a generator is really important, uh, where these folks are doing some of this uh, solar stuff. But I tell you, if you try to run um, heaters uh, on a solar system, you're going to drain it fast. And so a combination of solar and generator uh, to help protect the rig, especially in the mornings and at nighttime when you're sleeping, uh, you need to consider those uh, that scenario. And just because I'm talking about the winter, we're not even talking about the hot weather that like Sherry and I had to go through. That's a whole nother ball game. But uh, right now what I'm seeing is all these people being surprised about uh, having uh, issues and, and one of the biggest areas that, that frees up all the time is not necessarily the hoses as it is the uh, in caps or the uh, faucet area and so so critical that when you're putting this wrap uh, uh, heat, heating coil or heating uh, tape uh, on your uh, pipes you need to put them on those receptacles too because those are freeze up in a heartbeat and so, yeah, real battle. And not only on the RV, you have the receptacle there, but you have the receptacle of the RV hookups, and they tend to freeze right there too. So even though it's not your property and stuff, you need to protect that spigot and get that warm because if that freezes, you're out of water. So, yeah, it's just uh, uh, even like hot water heaters in these uh, RVs um, are, you know, designed for being recreational so when you're living in it you're putting a lot of pressure on these on everything in here especially like the rv uh oh, hot water tank we have here it's like mine's been keeping up i've been amazed i haven't any trouble and then we probably got really hard water here so I, uh, one thing i need to do is shut mine down and pull the uh, uh it's kind of like a zinc type of uh material that uh helps uh, keep the um water tank from corroding I bet you that needs to be replaced. I haven't been in there yet. So there we go. I mean, that's um, that's just wear and tear. That doesn't even have anything to do with weather. And boy, the last thing you want to do is let your uh, hot water heater get frozen and let water in there expand. And oh, it could be terrible. And I'm telling you these things to be preventative. I'm not saying uh, RV. you shouldn't live um, full-time in an RV. But if you do, uh, just you got to tell yourself they're not designed like a house. They're not designed to handle everyday life. And so uh, you can make it easier on the rig by maintaining it the best of your ability, 
protect it with extra rugs on the floor and in skirts and protecting your windows and protecting the top. Uh, and these things you wouldn't normally have to do if it's just a camping RV. But if you're going to live in it full time, it's like oh, you got to think about everything. Like, is my uh, tires protected? Like here, we got to protect the rubber on these tires because this hot weather is just brutal on tires and it'll disintegrate them. So uh, if you're going to be here for a while, you need to cover your tires and protect them. And uh, and not only just with the RV, you got to protect the ones on your uh, on your vehicles too if they're sitting around. And so sometimes you just don't have a choice if you're using your vehicle every day. And uh, of course, uh, just the brutal sun on the uh, uh, paint job and things like that. Uh, it's really important to get it, you know, get your rig washed and waxed and protected. Uh, and you need that also with the colder weather. And and then we haven't even talked about rainy weather. And oh, I think that's the worst. Uh, and like in places like Oregon and Washington, especially on the west side, um, you may be in temperatures where it's not quite freezing and not really hot, but it's just wet and muggy and raining all the time. And boy, let me tell you, when you got an RV with slides in it, it seems like they always seem to have a weak point of having a place they leak. Um, and it can be really a battle sometimes trying to figure out where that leak is. So if I was in a rainy area a lot, like I was uh, up in Washington, I would definitely put the little skirts or the little uh, uh, awnings above the RV to at least take the pressure off of the slides uh, for standing water. Um, and uh, But, you know, if you put those awnings on, you have a whole nother set of problems like windstorms and uh, those things are uh, uh, not always that durable and you get down here we can get up to 40 50 mile per hour winds out of nowhere and those little awning covers on your slides can uh, really be tortured uh, sometimes you may even have to bring a slide in for a while because you can't close those uh, uh, like you can with your regular awning and so you know, with every action is a reaction and so I guess a big part is if you're coming out here um, and especially in your planning uh, if you don't know the region you're going into hopefully there's people to call or people you can uh, or videos you can watch uh, that will try to explain to you some of the things that you'll be up against in different areas and uh, of course, the other thing uh, is brutal on RVs is bugs, critters. Um, these rigs, you know, they have openings in them, and especially when your slides are out, uh, you have the corners are really hard to seal up, and so um, the critters can get in. And if you're dealing with a place that has like the little sugar ants, or and then there's other like Alabama, I believe has the little. Uh, uh, ladybug issues and then of course you got spiders and and, and, and I've heard and then we had a special show where we're asking people to tell us their critter stories and there's been literally where uh, actually snakes have got into their rig and so it's brutal just totally brutal on these things and so uh, uh, some people you have to make like temporary uh, plugs or, or temporary um, you know shove foam or something into your slides if you have large openings uh, I spray underneath our uh, slides at least every other week with uh, something that I, I figure well I want to make it as distasteful for any critter to want to come in here and uh, um, and yeah uh, the sugar ants are just brutal you, once they get in your RV no matter how hard you battle them uh, they can just hang out and uh, out of nowhere they just show up again and it's like you think you got rid of them they're not gone and uh, yeah, it's just, so planning planning is big so uh, you know uh, and then of course you got the other problem is if you get an RV in cold temperatures or hot temperatures you need to prepare your RV to be able to just sit still so of course up in uh, colder areas you need to winterize and you need to learn how to do that 
And uh, you need to protect all your pipes. You need to protect your tanks. You need to protect your hot water heater big time. And uh, uh, shower heads. Even, uh, I've even had um, the little faucets in our shower uh, got a little bit too cold and there was water holding up in there. And I thought I had it drained out and cracked the uh, uh, little fixture behind the little knobs. And it wasn't that hard, but other than the fact that we had a leak. And uh, anytime you leak water in these RVs and it gets to the floor, they typically have uh, wood floors underneath. And, and so uh, you're talking about damaging your RV and over time, uh, wood rot. So, yeah, that's a lot of things to keep in mind when you're doing this. So, um, really, I mean, the best way to do these RVs is try to stay in fair weather all the time. But... Uh, that sounds really easy, doesn't it? But it, it's not reality. You have family to see. You have jobs. Uh, we have people who are doing contract work out of their RVs and they're being uh, places that they don't prefer to be. Uh, maybe their house is in a whole other state, but they're doing contract work in another state and using the RV to do it. And so they'll be exposed to weathers that they weren't uh, expecting and there will be unforeseen things and that's what we're trying to talk about is these unforeseen unfore things that will haunt you and damage your RV something fierce and it's a mindset and so I'm not saying this to scare you off I'm saying all this to tell you that you need to be proactive and buy this equipment and buy this protection for your RV before it happens because if you wait till the day after it happens, you've probably damaged your RV and it could cost you a lot of money. And before I go much farther, I want to take the time to uh, say hello to the sponsor, which is now goodmusicradio.com, which is a full-time radio station. It's an internet station, uh, and it's uh, doing very well, actually, thanks to you folks and other folks. Uh, um, it's a internet radio station with just greatest hits from past and present. Very little talk. And it's a great show, and you can take it anywhere, um, whether you're traveling or whether you're in your RV or whether you're... Uh, uh, doing a sport or just going to the park, uh, walking your dog. Uh, you can turn your cell phone right into a, a, a radio and you're set to go. So if you get a chance, check them out at goodmusicradio.com. And uh, if you have a cell phone, just go to goodmusicradio.com, scroll a little bit, and you'll see a little link in there. It says uh, the download the music app, and you just download that in the then you'll have a little icon that you can just go straight to the radio show and it's just simple and easy and fun to use. So check it out, goodmusicradio.com. Also want to remind people to uh, uh, send us notes. We'd love to hear from you. We got some. Uh, we always get good notes from folks. A lot of people are just confirming things that we've already talked about. We love that. Uh, you can contact us at our website at uh, um, rvtalkradio.com. Go to contact link. And that's private. Nobody will see that note. Or you can go to our Facebook. Uh, RV Talk Radio has their own f Facebook page. Or you can go to RV Travel Buddy. And we'd love to hear from you. And, of course, you can always email me directly at rob, R-O-B, at rvtalkradio.com. So I'd love to hear from you. I got to tell you that, boy, if you ever get the opportunity to get down to Arizona during the winter time it's so easy it's, I have to keep pinching myself and so right now you know we're watching all these videos of, of um, a lot of misery of being in cold weather with the RVs and we're sitting here in these beautiful high 60s low 70s degree weather going to parks walking walking our pets uh, Sherry and I will go to like a subway or some places that uh, the bagel house we make really good sandwiches we'll order sandwiches take cinder over to the park go sit down and relax and grass nice grass and people are walking around in shorts and in comfortable uh, clothing and um, it's so easy for us to forget just how cold and uncomfortable it can get up north so this is just an invite folks this isn't trying to torture you uh, but 
there's no doubt that it's uh, really nice to come to the southern states uh, this time of year. And it really, uh, this is when it really shines. And, of course, you know, you know we went through the hot weather in here. And it's like, oh, I still get these people. How can you stand that? But it was only for three months, really, the worst. And then I've got, Sherry and I get to share nine months of summer. And so... Um, just like you, know, the folks right now are going through the cold weather and stuff. They're all say, "Well, you know, we just got to hang in there for you know a, a few months, and then we get these beautiful areas." And that's absolutely true. Uh, but if you ever get a chance to avoid them freezing temperatures and want to and come and get to be a snowbirdish kind of person, uh, I do highly recommend Arizona. It's um, uh, endless for the things you can do here and. People always think it's all desert, and it's not. I mean, like, it isn't, you know, uh, what, two-hour drive from here, and you can be up in the snow near uh, Flagstaff right now. And we used to have the boat up at Page, and I'm really glad we brought it down because, um, you know, they're getting uh, weather like people up north. So, But the thing is, is uh, Arizona does have the beautiful rocks and canyons and desert, but they also got these beautiful forests and pine pine forests and um uh be, you know it's just it's the whole region's got something for everybody and so sherry and i haven't even begun to explore this place and we're looking forward to doing that uh we've been diligently working uh projects and it's been real hard for us to get out and about right now we haven't been doing many road trips you probably know so we have a uh, dropped many videos lately because we're um, reconfiguring a few things and so uh, and sherry uh, you know uh, been just working her little tootsies off and so yeah uh, it was hard enough just to get radio shows out in the last few weeks so i've uh, been kind of s sorry about that but at the same time uh, we got some transitions and things going on in the background that we'll uh, share with folks as soon as we kind of know all this what's you know, what we're doing and so in the meantime, uh, we've got some new equipment we've been bringing in. Um, finally got a recharger for our gimbal so we can actually start using the gimbal on the GoPro. Because I've noticed with age, um, when we're doing our videos, they're shaking a little more. And it's like, hmm, must be our 55 thing. So, yeah. Um, so it's one of those step back. Okay, all right, this is what we've been doing for the last few years. What do we want to do and prove it? What changes do we want to make? What new equipment are we bringing in? And uh, uh, looking at how uh, everything's laid out. So, yeah, it uh, should be really exciting. And a lot of it will emerge after the first of the year. So we're kind of going into the holidays of enjoying our family and, and kind of putting the cameras down for a little bit and quit pointing them in everybody's faces and just enjoy each other. Uh, but we'll get back into that routine again soon. Uh, in the meantime, um, I guess the big part right now is like Arizona is so comfortable right now. We're not really having any crises of problems with the RV. So, you know, of course, most of our videos are talking about, you know, the stresses of you know, RV issues and tips and problems. And so when you're in the weather mode that we're in right now, it's like, well, not a whole lot of things are going amok. And so uh, that's a good thing. But, boy, the one thing we're definitely noticing is um, we're living in this RV, and the RV is definitely showing signs of that. And what's that going to do when we're ready to sell this thing? This RV will be worn out more, even as, let's say, it's five years old when we go to sell it it's going to be aged like it's eight or 10. And so um, just because we lived in it full time. Uh, so yeah, if you're buying an RV, buy it from someone who's just been using it on the weekends once in a while, a lot less wear and tear. You just got to look out that they stored it and, and winterized it properly uh, when they're not using it. So, um, but if somebody has been in their RV full time, uh, that RV has been used and I mean really used. Some of you folks probably have heard me talk about it before, but I want to welcome a, a, uh, an RV park to our Help With Blogs uh, campaign. Uh, they've actually were with us for a while now. 
and there's actually new owners. And so they went from a regular website to a blog, which looked just like websites. But the thing is, that's so nice about them is they're kind of interactive and the search engines love them. So I wanted to talk about uh, uh, Rising River RV Park. They're in the works. Um, they're working on their site right now. It's actually operational and is working. But once again, it's a kind of a neat program we have. We, you know, of course, have our own servers. And so uh, what we do, and we just do a handful of customers. We don't try to do, we don't talk about this a whole lot because then it gets overwhelming. But uh, we have uh, folks that want an, a blog or an, a website for their travels or for their RV parks and things like that. And we also do a transport company and, other, and some other sites. And uh, uh, what it is is that basically we get them online, we set up their blog, we get them kind of moving forward, get it set up and running for them a little bit. And then for $29.95 a month, that's it. And, and if they sometimes if we have some major setup to get them functional right away, we may charge them 100 bucks or something like that just to kind of take care of that extra labor. Uh, but basically, it's $29.95 a month. Uh, and, and what's neat about it is, is if you never had a blog before and you kind of want somebody that you can talk to about how things work, you can call us and we kind of walk you through it. And then we have a, uh, we can actually access the website at the same time you're in it. So we can kind of help you learn how to load pictures and how to play around with the fonts and things like that. And it's a great program. And then what we try to do and we'll give our, all of our customers the option to, uh, say, I, I think we're getting it. I think we don't need to be coached anymore. We can just change them to a hosting account, and then that's twelve ninety five a month. So the 29 goes away. twelve ninety five is the permanent. And everybody has to have hosting. All websites have to have hosting. And we just leave them on our servers. And and even when we're at the twelve ninety five, we still get a call or two once in a while for help. And that's okay. I mean, it's not... It, it's more... We kind of enjoy it because the people that are our clients become kind of our friends. And at the same time, they're helping us pay for our servers. And so we appreciate it. And so, yeah, another successful one. It's called Rising River RV Park. It's an RV park up in Oregon. They're brand new owners. It's a very nice park along the river. I think they're in Roseburg. So uh, you get a chance. Go check out Rising River RV um, or I think they have two domains, or risingriverrvpark.com. Uh, nice people. They're excited that they have the RV park, and I'm sure they're putting a lot of work and effort into it. And so just to be uh, to help them out, we wanted to make sure and give them a shout-out. It's called risingriverrv.com. Go check out their website. Give them a call. Maybe if you're passing through the area, try to stay with them. Um, uh, nothing better than a nice, fresh, new people that are taking over an RV park and have a lot of pride and are trying to fix things up. And I'm sure that they're spending a lot of money to do it. And so uh, uh, the more support that we can give them to help them make it through those hard times of fixing up buildings and making uh, all the spaces nice. And they said they can handle very big rigs. So go for it. Check them out. Uh, risingriverrvpark.com or risingriverrv.com either one will get you there check them out the other thing I wanted to make sure to remind you of is if you have a product or service um, and it doesn't have to be RV related it could be something totally uh, outside of, uh, of the RV world we've told you earlier in the show that we own uh, goodmusicradio.com and it's a new fresh station and we are currently running some commercials on there now. This is a great opportunity if you'd like to have a commercial done or if you have an audio commercial that's 30, oh, around 30 seconds to 45 seconds long and you'd like to have us play it. And if it's a, a tasteful and it's a product that should be on a show like that, if you'd like to make an audio commercial and submit it to us, I think we can find a way to get it running for you. It helps us to build up our clientele by having a portfolio. At the same time, uh, the early birds like you can have the opportunity to advertise at either no cost or little cost or maybe a little trade of some sort. So give us a holler. This is for goodmusicradio.com. If you'd like to do a commercial for your product or service, give us a holler. Uh, listen to the show. You'll see that we have a couple of... Uh, 
of our commercials running on there and uh, other people, some other people too. Um, but right now there's very little commercials on it because it's a brand new show. It is growing and it's a good opportunity to get in for <laughs> no cost or no cost. And as we grow, you just, you get the benefits, you get grandfathered in. So check it out. If you got to do one, well, if you want to do a little advertising, it's a great opportunity. And also with this show, we can also do something like that here too. So give us a holler. We appreciate it. Do a little bartering or a little trading or like to uh, donate to the show. It's always helpful. We do appreciate it. Well, we're getting down to the end of the show this week. We really appreciate you listening. I want to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. Yeah, I said Christmas, and I'm going to continue saying that. For those of you that don't celebrate Christmas uh, in traditional way, uh, we hope you have a great holiday. And uh, I, I want to make this an example that the holidays is a wonderful time. It puts everybody in a really good kind of mode. So whether you actually celebrate Christmas or not, uh, we still want you to at least enjoy the, throw the commercialism to the side, but the, the, the friendship, the way people act, the giving and, and, and receiving, um, and just the wholesomeness of the holidays. Uh, I hope that you can bring that into your life, uh, no matter if you're a believer in Christmas or not. So, but anyway, uh, we wish everybody's holidays are good. We understand that, you know, the holidays can be tough for others. Our prayers are with you. And we really hope that everybody just really enjoys the holidays. So we'll talk about the holidays uh, throughout this, uh, this month. But uh, I just want to keep passing that happiness on to everybody. So I want to thank you so much for listening to the show this week. I'm Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. We uh, hope everybody's safe. Everybody uh, is able to maintain their RVs and all the different climates that are out there right now. And I, most of all, I hope everybody is safe. So, when you get a chance, if you haven't done it yet, get yourself an RV. Talk to you next week. Bye now. <music>